Hi guys, today we will talk about why some paramotors fly faster than others. We need to pay attention to one detail in the frame geometry. Welcome to my classroom. This is part 20 of the insights into paramotor geometry. We'll cover every aspect of paramotor geometry. And by the end of this, you will learn how to make a qualified judgment. What is the best paramotor for you? Please make sure you have watched the part 18 and 19. We will continue straight on. In the previous video, I said that this option with the prop perfectly vertical is ideal, yet nobody flies like this because it's not comfortable to sit perfectly upright. So most pilots choose this option despite the fact that it's less safe, slower and less efficient. Now let's have a look on design options that paramotor manufacturers have. This is the simple and most common one. I would guess about 90% of paramotors out there use this simple design. That is, you take a simple frame, put the harness and the pilot in the front, engine and a fuel tank in the back, and you set your carabiner in a position in a way that it's comfortably reclined to the back. Now the other option is to build this recline angle right into the main frame. That is, there is a 10 roughly 10 degree angle between your back and the prop. This means you can have a perfectly vertical prop in flight, which is the optimal position, is the fastest, most efficient and safest position. And you have a comfortably reclined angle for your back. Now, there are very few paramotors to incorporate this design. Uh, one of them is Scout. There are some little angle in the mini plane frames, I guess. And that's it, probably. Obviously, in flight, this is by far the best configuration, optimal prop position and comfortable back position. There are some disadvantages, however, on the ground. So, start with the takeoff phase number one. As you lean forward to pull the glider off the ground, this configuration adds another 10 degrees, so your cage is tilted a bit more to forward and touches your risers a bit longer, which is honestly not a big deal. So both configurations are pretty equal. As you have pulled the glider above your head and you start running probably at maybe quarter throttle just to maintain speed, you want to check your glider, look into the glider. Obviously with these configurations you have less room for your head so your, uh, so your view into the glider is somewhat limited. Once you have checked your glider and everything is okay, it's time for the phase three, that is the full throttle run. Now, with this configuration, you need to pay attention and do everything correct and right. You must not lean forward, otherwise the thrust line will point down instead of push you into the ground. But if you do it correctly, it's no big issue. Let's do the final comparison of both frame geometry options. So it's a simple frame and a frame with the built-in recline angle. As said before, this is the safest, most efficient and the fastest configuration. There are some disadvantages and that is the limited view to check your glider on takeoff, but you, you can perfectly see your tips, probably maybe not the, the center part. Uh, final run on full throttle. It's okay if you do it right. This config configuration is somewhat more forgiving for beginner mistakes. And now, what is your flying style? If you mostly fly short cross-country flights, you probably don't care that much about speed and efficiency. That's, uh, that's why the simple frame would be probably slightly better for you. If you are an adventure pilot, 
you definitely care about speed and efficiency, you would be better off with this option. Same for slalom and freestyle pilots because you won't efficiently use every portion of your thrust that engine is giving to you. As an acro pilot or thermaling pilot, you probably don't care about speed and efficiency. You only need the engine to climb and then you shut it off. That is, you would be slightly better off with this configuration and it's easier to do ground handling with. Me as a paramotor designer and pilot, I have chosen this configuration simply because I have built the scout primarily for flying and optimized it for flying and the disadvantages can be overcome with good technique. Thanks for watching. Should you have any question, please leave a comment. In the next video, we'll talk about harness geometry. So stay with us. Please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that. Thank you. Ciao.